Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. This week I am using the Frosted Forest Bundle. This is an online exclusive, which just means you'll only find it online on the Stampin' Up! website. It's not in any catalogs. It is available to everyone. Um, you just have to go online to find it. It's a really cool bundle, uh, different than our normal bundles. It has the stamp sets, lots of dies, but also six different tree builder masks. Um, you have two different trees here, and they're really fun. I have had so much fun playing with these trees. We're going to make a tall fall-colored tree here in the heat of summer. I'm thinking of fall. Um, and inside our little box is everybody's favorite peanut butter cups. Just a regular-sized Reese's peanut butter cup. All right, well, let's get started, and we're going to do our masking first. So I have a sticky sheet that I got on Amazon, and I have it linked on today's blog post for you. It just kind of holds things in place, so you don't have to worry about tape or anything. Put your basic white piece down, and you'll notice that these masks have a notch at the top. And what you'll also notice is that there, there are numbers, one, two, and three. Um, I will admit, the first time using the mask, I did them upside down, not paying any attention to that, and realized when I was done that they were back. The tree was beautiful, but it was backwards, and the die didn't cut it out. So make sure your notches are on the left side at the top. All right. Oh, another thing I was going to show you that we're going to do, we're actually going to stamp the tree. You can stamp the tree or you cannot stamp the tree. Here's the difference. This one is stamped and this one is not. Either way, I like them both. Um, I decided just to use the stamp this time. It gives us a little more detail. All right. Take your stamp and on these large stamps, I like to turn them over backwards. Ink it up with Memento Black. And we're gonna stamp that right there. All right, I'm gonna get my first mask, which is the trunk. And I'm gonna line it up so that I can see just the trunk there in the frame of the mask. All right, for this uh, color I'm using, Pecan Pie, I'm gonna take one of my blending brushes. We have two different size blending brushes, small and large, and this is the large one, the regular size one. Whichever one you wanna use, whichever you prefer will be just fine. All right, I'm just taking that ink and rubbing it on there. Now I'm gonna lift up my mask, and I'm gonna get the next one, which is number two. And I'm gonna line that up. And you'll see that the little plastic part here in the middle is gonna completely cover up the pecan pie part that you did. That's how you know you're in the right place. And I'm gonna start with Daffodil Delight. All right, I'm gonna take, this time I'm using one of our smaller brushes, and I'm just gonna go all the way over it with some Daffodil Delight. Now, before I take this mask up, I'm gonna get pumpkin pie and add in some pumpkin pie. Now, not a lot because it is a strong color, so I'm just gonna kind of maybe go along the outsides and the edges, give it just some color variation like that. All right, so now, last but not least, there we go, beautiful. I am gonna take my third mask and we're gonna put this on here. This is gonna kind of create these shadows for us. Wiggle it around until you see it's in the right place. There we go. And I think I'm gonna use pumpkin pie again. You can use Cajun Craze here, but I think I'm gonna just stick with pumpkin pie and give us our darker shadows there like that so that they're not too dark. There we go. All right, now I'm thinking, hmm, I think I need to come back with that other mask. Let's try that and add in a little bit more color because I feel like now my shadows are a little bit too dark. So now let's take the Daffodil Delight and really try to blend all of that 
And I think I will get some more pumpkin pie. So you just wanna play around with it until you get that good color that you feel is just right. You'll know when it's right. And I think that is good. Let's see. Yes, look at that, gorgeous. All right, let me move all of my ink and my mask. Now be careful, your masks still have that ink on it. It hasn't dried on this plastic. You wanna take these to your sink and just run a water over them and it'll clear them perfectly. All right, we're gonna stamp the sentiment and I'm gonna do this one in Cajun Craze. We're gonna cut that out with one of our nested essential dies, this little stitched rectangle. We bring over our cut and emboss machine and we need our dies. Let me grab the correct die that goes with this tree right here. Stick that right there. And we'll put that one right there. And let's run it through. Now, ahead of time, I have also cut out a crumb cake nested essential hexagon, which I'll show you in just a sec. And we're gonna mount this onto that crumb cake hexagon. Here we go. Okay, so dimensionals, of course. Okay, we're gonna put that right in the middle. Now I'm gonna get my linen thread and I'm gonna tie a bow. Now look, I don't have very much left. <laughs> I used, I made a double bow on this one, but I don't think I have enough to make a double bow. So this time we'll just do a single bow. A double bow is just when you take two you fold the linen thread in half and you, so you have two threads and you just tie it at, like you have one. Just keep them together when you tie it. All right, let's put that on with a glue dot. Let's kind of fluff it up. All right, and then another dimensional goes right there. And we'll take our sentiment, no beauty, shines brighter than that of a good heart. All right, and I think we do need to trim these ends just a little bit. All right, so now that we've got that done, let's make our box. Now look, I actually, my box here is Mossy Meadow, but it looks like for some reason I cut a piece of pecan pie. That's okay, we'll just go with it. It's not gonna be as beautiful as our, I think Mossy Meadow looks really good because it coordinates perfectly with this paper. This is the um, Iconic Celebrations Designer Series paper that is an online exclusive as well. All right, you're gonna start with a piece of cardstock that is six and three fourths by six and a fourth. On the long side, we're gonna score it at half of an inch, one and an eighth, and six and an eighth. Turn it on the short side and score it at two and a fourth, two and seven eighths, five and an eighth, and five and three fourths. All right. Now grab your bone folder and we're gonna burnish those lines. Well, this bone folder seems to have ink on it. I do occasionally use my bone folders to re-ink my ink pads. <laughs> I know, it's a bad habit. It just helps smooth that ink out in your ink, on your uh, ink pad so much better than anything else. All right, now we've got this side right here that has these two sections. We're gonna cut off the squares on that end. And notice I'm going in just slightly at an angle. Up here, we're gonna cut the two off like that. All right, now this is gonna be the part that folds over on our box. So first, I want you to come in and cut right here, and then cut that little tab off. Come in here and here and cut that little tab off. Don't worry, I'm gonna set it down in just a second so you can see it. It'll make it easier. Okay. Now, down at the bottom, this is the side that has just the single little 
uh, single row. I'm gonna cut those score lines and then I'm gonna cut the corners off of each of these little square tabs. Okay, and then last but not least, cut the corners off of that one. All right, and that's what your piece looks like, okay? This is the short side, this is the long side. So if you wanna pause the video to look at, compare it to yours as you cut, go right ahead. All right, I'm gonna put um, my designer series paper on here. I've got a little straggler. And we're gonna put this DSP right here. And, um, you know, let's see, I do have my tear and tape here, so we'll use tear and tape for this right here. Okay, peel that backing off. And we're gonna fold that in and fold that over and they should line up perfectly like that, okay? Now at the bottom, you wanna fold in the sides first, then the back, and you're gonna fold in the front flap last. That front flap, um, the reason we do it last is because it's gonna give you a nice rounded edge all on all four uh, edges of your the front of your box. All right, let's stick that in there and get that nice and stuck down. We'll put in our Reese's. I always um, think that a Reese's peanut butter cup treat box is a great masculine gift. Um, I know my husband loves, he's not a huge candy person, but he loves Reese's peanut butter cups. So that makes for a great um, guy treat, if you will. Of course, I would love it as well, and I'm not a guy, so <laughs> it could go for anybody. All right, a couple of dimensionals there, and there you're, you are done. All right, there's our two boxes. I hope you enjoyed this project. Like I mentioned, please go back to my blog. There are two other Frosted Forest projects there for you, free PDF with the measurements and supply list, and have fun stamping, everybody. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.